page 90, chapter 1, 3. The righteousness of the law versus the righteousness of faith. To impute is to charge, to attribute, or to credit something to someone. Now always remember all analogies are not perfect to explain the deep truths of the word of God, yet they put mental pictures in our mind that help us understand in simple ways complex spiritual truths. That is why Jesus used different parables to explain the same spiritual concept of the kingdom of God, for each parable reveals a specific aspect of the kingdom of God. That is also why God used different symbols for the Holy Spirit in the Bible, because each symbol unveils some aspects and characteristics of the Holy Spirit. Thus, when you put all the symbols of the Holy Spirit together, you have the full picture of who He is. The same thing applies for all the types and shadows of Jesus in the Old Testament. Let us use what our generation can easily understand. The banks give their customers either a credit card or a debit card. Think of the righteousness of the law as a debit account and the righteousness of faith, even the imputed righteousness, as a credit account. With a debit account, they give you a debit card. You can only withdraw what you have deposited in the bank and what interest your financial investments with that bank have yielded. If you want to withdraw more than what is in your debit account, they will tell you insufficient funds. If you want to buy a house, a car, and you do not have the exact amount in your account, the transaction will not be approved by your bank. The reason why they do not allow you to withdraw more than you have in your account is because they do not trust you at all to pay them back. What is righteousness? Now the word righteous is the Hebrew word tzaddik, which means just man, lawful man, and righteous, and it is a Greek word dikaios, which means acquittable man in character and act, innocent person, holy man, just man and righteous. Equitable is being equal in regard to the right of persons, distributing equal justice. And a lawful man, in our case, is a man that conforms himself to the law of God, even the Bible. Nehemiah says of God, He performs his words because he is righteous. Nehemiah 9 verse 8 so being righteous is not just having a right standing with God, it is being a man of your word, a man with integrity or uprightness. Job, who was a righteous man, held on to his integrity or uprightness. Of him it is written, There was a man in the land, land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, Yasha, straight, equity, just and upright, which means honest just, adhering to rectitude in all social intercourse, not deviating from correct moral principles, and one that feared God and eschewed or shunned evil, Job 1 verse 1. His wife said to him, Do you still hold to your integrity, Tumah, innocence, integrity? Curse God and die, Job 2 verse 9. I like the Louis II French version of the Bible, for they use two words to translate righteousness, justice and uprightness. And the translators were right. In 2014, when I decided to read my Bible in French, from Genesis to Revelation, that is when I noticed that the translators used at times justice to translate righteousness and other times uprightness to translate righteousness. Then the Lord spoke to me and explained to me according to the scriptures, as I have shown you above, that a righteous man is not just one who is has a right standing with the Lord, but also one who is a just man and an upright man as we have defined above. A person who says he practices righteousness is a holy man, and a person who says he lives a holy life practices righteousness. Righteousness and holiness cannot be separated. They work hand in hand. You cannot dissociate them. They cleave to each other. God says, those who are of a froward or perverse heart are an abomination to the Lord, but such as are upright in their way are his delight. 
Proverbs 11 verse 20. The sacrifice of the wicked or ungodly is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. Proverbs 15 verse 8. So let us go back to our example of the bank dealing with its account holders. The reason why they only give you the debit card is because they do not trust you. You are not credit trustworthy. They do not know you. They do not want to take a big gamble on you and believe that you are just in all your dealings and hold on to your integrity. You have not been with them long enough to gain their trust. Paul tells us what Moses says about righteousness of the law which is a debit account, and the righteousness of faith, which is a credit account. He says, For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law, that the man who does those things shall live by them, in Leviticus 18 verse 5. But the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise, Say not in your heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above, or Who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Romans 10 verse 5 to 7. So because the bank does not trust you, you will have to work for every penny you want to withdraw from that debit account, and that will be your lifestyle. Of course you will make personal investments, and the increase they yield will be deposited into your debit account, yet the bank will only allow you to withdraw what is in your debit account. Now why was the bank of heaven not able to give us credit? Because once upon a time mankind used to own a credit account with God. God created the heaven and the earth and all that is in the earth. He gave the earth to mankind to tend it. Mankind did not work for it even one day. God also credited mankind with righteousness, believing that they would act according to the word of God. Mankind destroyed the trust, even credit, that was given to them by God when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden. Jesus puts it this way, Therefore the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king, God, who would take account of his servants, and when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, who owed him ten thousand talents, about two hundred and eighty tons of gold. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had in payment to be made. Matthew 18 verse 23 to 25 So that debt can never be paid, even if we and our children work our whole lives because of the original sin. The path of sin is bondage or slavery for the whole human race. Jesus explains it, saying, You shall know the truth. Jesus, who is the word made flesh, is the truth according to John 14.6 and John 17.17. 17. And the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We, being Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man, how do you say you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever commits sin is a servant, even slave of sin. John eight thirty two to 34 And eventually the wages of sin is death, not just physical death, but also spiritual death, and being thrown into hell fire because your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. Romans 6, verse 23, and Revelation 20, verse 15. So God, because he so loved mankind, decided to cover that debt we owed him. That is what we call atonement. It is a covering. Because of that enormous debt we all owed and would never be able to pay it, neither would the generations after us have been able to pay it, thus the bank of heaven mostly dealt with mankind with a debit account waiting for the day when that enormous debt will be fully paid, so that God can reopen our credit account in heaven. Now you sit down and say to yourself, it'll take me a whole lifetime of work if I have to pay everything on debit, notwithstanding that there is still that enormous pending debt, and every year the bank reminds me that it has not been paid yet.
That is why every year they had the Day of Atonement. It was a reminder for the whole world that the enormous debt we owed God was not paid yet and for another year the Lord would cover it. Paul explains it saying, For the law which has a shadow of good things to come, not the very image of the things, appearing year by year with the same sacrifices which they offer continually, they are never able to perfect those drawing near, for then would they not have ceased to be offered. Because the worshippers, when they had been once for all purged, would have had no more conscience of sin. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again of sins every year, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Hebrews 10 verse 1 to 4 You say to yourself, If I want a car, I need first of all to work and make investments, and then wait for those investments to yield their increase, and only if I have enough money can I go and buy that car, that house, that aircraft, etc., who can go and see the owner of the bank to give me credit? That person must have a great fortune in that bank because of his works and the increase that his investments yielded. He first of all must pay off my enormous pending debt that I am constantly reminded of every year and he must become my guarantor, one who engages to see that the stipulations of another are performed, also one who engages to secure another in any right or possession. Not many people want to be surety or guarantor for their friend, not to talk about being surety for a total stranger. You cannot tell whether your friend or that stranger will be just and upright in all his dealings and perform his words. So think twice before being surety or guarantor for anybody and signing legal documents. The Bible says, My son, if you be surety, a rub, to be security as a kind of exchange, mortgage, give pledges for your friend, if you have stricken your hand with a stranger, meaning you have agreed and signed the legal documents the banker gave you to be guarantor for the loan, even the mortgage of your friend, you are snared with the words of your mouth, and the signed legal documents that the banker gave you, you are taken with the words of your mouth. Proverbs 6 verse 1 to 2 now, imagine a complete stranger came to you and you agreed to go and see that banker and sign legal documents so that you will be his guarantor for the loan or the mortgage he takes. The Bible says, He who is surety for a stranger shall smart for it or shall be ruined, for if your house was the collateral for the mortgage that stranger took, when he defaults in his payments your house might be repossessed. But he who hates suretyship is sure, or he who hates being a guarantor is safe. Proverbs 11 verse 15 Everybody wants to play it safe. A man void of understanding strikes hands, reads and signs legal documents the banker gave him, and becomes surety, guarantor, in the presence of his friend. Proverbs 17 verse 18 When his friend or the stranger for whom he vouched to be a guarantor, defaults in his payments, the banker will come after the guarantor, not after his friend or that stranger. The banker will instruct the debt collector, saying, Take the garment, or the possessions, or debit the money from the bank account of him, who is surety, guarantor for a stranger, and take a pledge from him for strangers, meaning what his friend or stranger took as loan or mortgage, will be collected from him or his bank account, since he is the guarantor. Proverbs 20 verse 16 So you sit down and say to yourself, None of my friends has enough money in their bank account to first of all pay off my enormous debt and then be willing to become my guarantor. And I am a stranger to all the billionaires of the earth. They worked hard for their money and they do not want to waste it on a complete stranger like me. Why should any of them go and see the owner of the bank on my behalf, and why should any of them become my guarantor? You are left without hope of having your pending debt being paid off, so that you can be given a credit from your bank.
so you are left only with your sowing and reaping, which is a debit account. The bank has been gracious enough to not demand the payment pending but to cover it every year. Had the bank started collecting something for your enormous pending debt, you would not have even been able to survive. While the earth remains seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Genesis 8 verse 22 he who sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. 2 Corinthians 9 6. That has been your lifestyle so far. And I saw a book on the right of him sitting on the throne, written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loosen its seals? And no one in heaven, nor on the earth, nor under the earth, was able to open the book or to look at it. And I wept very much, because no one was found worthy to open and to read the book, nor to look at it. Revelation 5 verse 1 to 4 that is the situation of each one of us prior to our salvation. I am glad to inform you that hope has come, and one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals of it. And I looked, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, amidst the elders, a lamb stood, as if it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him sitting on the throne. Revelations 5, verse 5 to 7. Yes, Jesus came and paid the debt mankind owned in full to the justice of heaven, and that debt has been taken away. That is remission, not just covered until next year, which was atonement. For without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission. Hebrews 9 verse 22 That debt has been paid in full for all mankind. For Christ has not entered into the holy of holies, made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, even as the high priest entered into the holy of holies every year with the blood of others, for then he must have suffered often since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed to men once to die, but after this judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and to those who look for him he shall appear the second time without sin to salvation. Hebrews 9 verse 24 to 28 it is on this basis that in the account Jesus gave us in Matthew eighteen twenty three to 35 the king, even God, forgave and remitted all the debt of that servant of his who could not pay back the ten thousand talents. Jesus Christ is the one who paid it in full, so that servant and family could go back free. The owner of the bank of heaven is God the Father, our King. You need to have a bank account in heaven if you want your enormous debt to be erased. It is not automatic, though. Jesus paid it for all mankind. How do I open a bank account in heaven? Well, it is simple. You must be born again. John 3 verse 7 then your name will be written in the book of life in heaven. Philippians 4 verse 3, Revelation 20 verse 15, and Revelation 21 verse 27. Then Jesus will take the scroll of your life that has been perfectly sealed with seven seals and loose those seals to reopen your account, even a credit account. Think of it this way, in the spiritual realm there are only two banks, and you have to choose in which bank you want to open a spiritual account. 
You cannot have spiritual bank accounts in the two banks at the same time. The first spiritual bank is called the kingdom of God, and the second bank is called the kingdom of darkness. If you have not opened a bank account in the kingdom of God by being born again, de facto, you have a spiritual account in the kingdom of darkness. Jesus is the only way to the Father God, truth and life. If you have not received him as your Lord and Saviour, the devil is your father, John 14 verse 6 and John 8 verse 44. And when you become born again, meaning you open a spiritual bank account in the bank called the Kingdom of God by receiving Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, your account in the Kingdom of Darkness is closed and all files they had on you have been transferred to the Kingdom of God and erased from the database of the Kingdom of Darkness. For he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the remission of sins. Colossians 1 verse 13 to 14 Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and has taken it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Having stripped rulers and authorities, he made a show of them publicly, triumphing over them in it. Colossians 2 verse 14 to 15 If you have not yet opened a bank account in the kingdom of heaven, it is high time you do so now. You must be born again, even born from above. John 3 verse 7 if you walk into the spiritual bank of the kingdom of God and tell them I want to withdraw some money, the first thing they will ask you is, do you have an account with the kingdom of God? If you do not have an account with them, they will ask you politely, sir, do you want to open an account with us? Even, do you want to be born again? If you say, no, I do not want to open an account with you, even I do not want to be born again, but I want to withdraw money. They will tell you, we only serve those who have an account with our bank. We have nothing against your person per se, but that is the principle of our bank. We do not allow those who have an account with us to also hold an account with the Kingdom of Darkness Bank. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. The demon of greed, which is the vassal of Satan. Matthew 6 verse 24 All who decide to open an account with the kingdom of God must abide by that principle. It is a command. Our God, the owner of the kingdom of God, is a generous person. He even runs charitable deeds for those who do not hold an account with him, even for those who are not born again yet. Our Father in heaven makes his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Matthew 5 verse 45 if you do not have a bank account with the Kingdom of God, you will be referred to the charity organization of the Kingdom of God. Their bread, crumbs and leftover things of the children of God are stored up, and you are not automatically qualified to receive those crumbs and leftovers. You will have to present your case and it can be approved or rejected by God. In Mark seven twenty five to thirty and Matthew fifteen twenty one to twenty eight, we have the story of the Syrophoenician woman who was not part of the covenant of Israel. She did not have an account in the kingdom of God, for de facto her account was in the kingdom of darkness. Yet she wanted to make, on behalf of her demon-possessed daughter, a withdrawal of the bread of healing and deliverance that only belongs to those who have an account with the kingdom of God, even children of God. Jesus said to her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. She answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go your way, the devil is gone out of your daughter. 
Why on earth would anyone be satisfied with bread crumbs when he can receive the whole bread if he willingly chooses to open a bank account with the kingdom of God? The children of Israel in the book of Judges wanted to have two spiritual bank accounts, one with the kingdom of heaven and another with the kingdom of darkness. They lived like the heathen and they expected to make spiritual withdrawal of the bread of deliverance from the kingdom of God. God delivered them over and over in his infinite mercy, but they despised the riches of his goodness, kindness and forbearance. Paul tells us, do you despise the riches of God's goodness and forbearance and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But after your hardness and impenitent heart, you treasure up unto yourself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Romans 2 verse 4 to 5 God said to them in the day of Jephthah, I have delivered you countless times, even given you the bread of deliverance, whenever you came for a withdrawal. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry out to the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in your time of distress. Judges 10 verse 13 to 14 God only delivered them after they had genuinely forsaken their idols and their evil ways. I told you, as children of God, you cannot be having two spiritual accounts, one in the kingdom of God and the other in the kingdom of darkness. Paul says to the born-again believers of Corinth, Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor abusers, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11 Though you used to have your name written in the book of life, if you continue to practice what Paul has listed in 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11, your name will be blotted out of the book of life, and you will suffer the same destruction of hellfire with the unsaved. David says, let them be blotted out of the book of life and not be written with the righteous. Psalm 69 verse 28. Jesus says, The one who overcomes, this one will be clothed in white clothing, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Revelation 3 verse 5. And if any one was not found having been written in the book of life, he was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20 verse 15 Once saved, not always saved. You need to practice righteousness and holiness. I say unto you, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Hebrews 12 verse 14 in the days of Ezekiel, the people were doing all kinds of evil, even inside the house of God. In Ezekiel 8, God opened the spiritual eyes of Ezekiel to see the idol of Tammuz, worshipped by the woman inside the temple, and to see the idols the elders of Israel had in their rooms, and all kinds of abominations they were doing. They thought that God did not see them in their secret rooms. And in Ezekiel 20, certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel, and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Have you come to inquire of me? As I live, says the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Will you judge them, son of man? Will you judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers? Ezekiel 20 verse 2 to 4 
Truly, Jesus told us, when he, the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of prophecy, according to Revelation 19.10, has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, John 16, verse 8. So sometimes when people, even born-again Christians, come to a minister of reconciliation asking, inquire of the Lord for me what I should do in my situation. They want to receive a prophecy, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, or any other manifestations of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord, who has already revealed to the Minister of Reconciliation the abominations that believer is doing, will first of all judge according to the Scripture those abominations, and ask that person to genuinely repent. If that person is not willing to repent, then the Holy Spirit will say to him, Go and cry out to the idols who you are worshipping. Let them deliver you and give you prophecies. I, the Lord, will not be inquired of by you, if you are not willing to repent and forsake your abominable ways. Some Christians, like Cornelius, the Roman centurion in Acts 10, though they did not yet have an account in the kingdom of God, they had been donating things into the charity organization of the kingdom of God, meaning they had been giving to the church and giving alms, even making prayer to the God of heaven. The Bible says, He who has pity upon the poor lends unto the Lord, and that which he has given will he pay him again. Proverbs 19, verse 17. So God says, This man has been praying to me, giving to my charity organization, but has not got an account in the kingdom of God. I will send him two of my staff members to ask him whether he wants to open an account in the kingdom of God, even be born again. So God sent an angel to let him know that God noticed his good deeds, so he should summon Simon Peter, who is a representative of the kingdom of God, to tell him what he ought to do to open an account in the kingdom of God, even be born again. We have talked about the righteousness of the law or a debit account in the kingdom of God. Now let us talk about the righteousness of faith or a credit account in the kingdom of God. Paul says again, the righteousness of faith says this, Do not say in your heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down, or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Romans 10 verse 6 to 7 The problem was, even though we have worked and made a good investment in the bank, we did not have someone who was rich enough who could first pay off our enormous debt and then become our guarantor so that the bank could give us that loan or that mortgage. Well, Christ Jesus is that rich person we've been waiting for. He came and redeemed us, ransomed us in full, as we have explained. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. 2 Corinthians 8-9 to Christ Jesus has not just paid the debt we owed in full, but is also the guarantor of every born-again Christian, even the surety of a better testament. Paul tells us, By so much more Jesus has become a surety or a guarantee of a better covenant. Hebrews 7 verse 22 Let us put it in earthly terms. I will use my example in gold so that whatever the exchange rate of gold is in your generation, you will be able to appreciate what God has done for you and me. Still based on the story Jesus gave us in Matthew eighteen twenty three to 35 each one of us, because of the original sin, owed God or King about 10,000 talents, which are about 280 tons of gold. And through Christ Jesus, those 280 tons of gold we owed God were expunged. That debt was fully paid by the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yet it did not bankrupt Jesus Christ, for he says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. Psalm 24 verse 1 All that belongs to the Father is mine, Jesus. 
John 16 verse 15. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts, even Jesus Christ, Haggai 2 verse 8. Jesus Christ is not bankrupt because he redeemed mankind. Imagine you want to loan of a thousand pounds, and Jesus, who is your guarantor, has all the gold and all the silver of the earth in the bank. The bank will not hesitate to give you the loan. Thus, instead of saving up ten pounds every month for a hundred months, so that you will have a thousand pounds to withdraw from your debit account, you can be given a thousand credit based on the trustworthiness, the integrity and the richness of your guarantor. Christ Jesus. God credited you for what you did not have because of the one who has ransomed you and become your guarantor, Christ Jesus, so that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who of God is made to us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that according as it is written, he who glories let him glory in the Lord Jesus, who is our guarantor. 1 Corinthians 1, 29-31 God credited us with, or imputed to us, who Christ Jesus is, and what Christ Jesus has. We have explained in the Perfect Redemption Plan series what has been imputed to us, or credited to us by God, when we became born again. But truly a credit is a debt. We do not have to pay the initial debt we owed God because of the fall of mankind, for Christ Jesus has ransomed us in full. What the debt we have towards God is, is to go and do the same thing He has done for us to someone else. Go and share the truth that has set us free with someone else. Be to the world who Jesus has said we are now, a new creation. Paul tells us, I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the foreigners, both to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me lies, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are at Rome also. Romans 1, 14-15 In that story of Matthew eighteen twenty three to 35 the servant who was forgiven and had his 10,000 talents of debt remitted, thought he did not have a debt to God, to do the same thing to his fellow servants. God forgave us, so we should also forgive others. Jesus says, Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, you do even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Matthew 7 verse 12 by this we have known the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. 1 John 3 verse 16 How will you feel if you recommend a friend of yours for a job, and you vouched for him that he was always punctual, honest, good moral standard, impartial in all his dealings with people, and full of integrity financially, etc.? The job was given to that friend of yours based on what you credited him for or imputed unto him. If your friend truly loves you, he will live up to what you have credited him with. If he does not, he will cause people to no longer consider any person you recommend and even to blaspheme your name and people will not want to have anything to do with you. Paul tells us, Behold, you are called a Jew, in our case a spiritual Jew, even born-again Christians, who are now in the commonwealth of Israel, and rest in the law, in the Bible, and boast in God, and know his will, and approve the things excelling, being instructed out of the law, the Bible, and persuading yourselves to be a guide of the blind, a light to those in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, who have the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law, the Bible. Therefore, the one teaching another, do you not teach yourself? The one preaching not to steal, do you steal? The one saying not to commit adultery, do you commit adultery? Do you watch pornography, practice all the other sexual sins? The one detesting idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law, the instructions of the Bible, do you dishonor God through breaking the law, the instructions of the Bible? 
For the name of God is blasphemed among the nations because of you. Romans 2 verse 17 to 23 Let us not be the reason why people would refuse to receive Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, but let us live and act as Jesus would have done if he were standing before our relatives and neighbours. For as Jesus Christ is, so are we in this world. That is what Jesus credited us for. 1 John 4 verse 17 We can never repay God for the sacrifice of Jesus and what he has credited us with or imputed unto us by the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Matthew eighteen twenty three to 35 Jesus uses the example of two servants of the same king. The first servant owes his king 10,000 talents of gold. He and all his family could work their whole life and still would not be able to repay that debt. The king forgave and remitted him of all that debt. Yet that servant was not able to forgive the hundred denarii his fellow servant owed him. The king expected him to be debtor to his fellow servants to do unto them what the king has done unto him. If we believe that Jesus has imputed his righteousness unto us, then we ought to practice righteousness. The same thing applies to everything that has been imputed or credited unto us by the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. To be continued.